let me first uh, introduce our wonderful speaker today, Yoshiteru Maenu. Thanks a lot for accepting the invitation. It is a wonderful pleasure to have you here. So um, Yoshiteru got his PhD in physics from the University of California in San Diego in 1984. Then he was a research associate in Hiroshima University and a visiting scientist at IBM Research. And in uh, 1989, he was associate professor at the Hiroshima University. And in 1996, he moved as associate professor uh, to the Department of Physics in Kyoto University, where he is uh, nowadays. So since 2001, he has been a full professor at uh, Kyoto University, first at the International Innovation Center, and then at the Department of Physics of Kyoto University. And on the physics side, uh, Yoshi Maeno has worked on many of the most important topics in, con in condensed matter physics and quantum materials in the last decades, including topological and correlated quantum phenomena, and among those, metal insulator transitions and strongly correlated systems, quantum critical phenomena, geometrically frustrated systems, such as quantum spin liquids and quantum spin ice, and the topic that it's uh, perhaps the most central one of the talk that he will present, be presenting today, which is spin triplet superconductivity in ruthenates. Uh, so today, Joshi Terumano is going to tell us about superconductivity in SRO beyond unconventional, which is one of the topics of uh, most excitement in current years. So with this, Joshi, thanks so much for accepting the invitation and we look forward to your talk. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so uh, it's really a great pleasure to, uh, to have this opportunity and uh, really like uh, thank uh, uh, Jose uh, for this uh, opportunity. And uh, so uh, I already saw um, uh, a number of people who are really uh, professional in this uh, field. So I really uh, appreciate if you make uh, comments and if I say something wrong, please correct me. Okay, so let me start. Uh, so is the audio and the visual fine now? Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yes. So the uh, the title is a superconductivity of strontium to ruthenium four beyond uh, unconventional. Okay. So my name is Yoshi Maino uh, from Kyoto University, and uh, so there are two, three parts. Before nine, 2019, and after 2019, and then I'll, in the part two is the main part, and now introduce you to uh, various uh, new developments and current issues, which includes these uh, uh, experimental results. And then uh, in the third part, I will discuss uh, how the puzzle may be solved, and some theoretical uh, discussion also. Okay, and then, uh, right, the, uh, for the, I, I'd, I'd like to give a special acknowledgement uh, for this talk and uh, this, uh, uh, acknowledgement uh, who, who are involved, uh, who helped me to give this talk. Uh, Stuart Brown at UCLA and my colleague at Kyoto University and uh, uh, Kikugawa and then uh, Dresden and the PSI uh, uh, gr uh, groups, uh, Clifford Hicks and uh, Greenenko, uh, uh, Hans Henning Klaus uh, Miyosar group and then as well as a PSI uh, uh, Miyosar group. And then Kashiwa Nagoya group people. Uh, and uh, Manfred Sieg Sigrist uh, uh, has been working on this uh, for a long time, uh, since the beginning. And so I really appreciate uh, his uh, uh, guidance. <clears throat> and then uh, we have been working on OSS uh, project and then uh, Jose Dado was a member of uh, this OSS uh, project uh, when he was working with uh, Manfred Sigrist. That's why, why, how we uh, get to know each other. Okay, so let me go on. Then uh, this is uh, not, not the coronavirus. Uh, this is a first wave and the second wave is now emerging. And uh, what is this? This is the, uh, the, the chronological, I mean, this uh, starting from uh, 1994 and now it's uh, two, 2020. And uh, this is the uh, number of citations, uh, Google Scholar citations uh, about uh, a couple of months ago uh, on this, uh, uh, paper uh, reporting the discovery of superconductivity in strontium to ruthenium 4 in 94. So there is a first wave uh, with uh, exciting uh, new results coming in. And then uh, there is some topological interest in topological superconductivity. And then there is uh, another uh, wave which is just emerging. Okay, and then, uh, so I, I, this is the topic of this talk today. 
And then uh, why are strong gym to ruthenium on four keeps uh, attracting uh, interest? Uh, this is uh, from uh, uh, one of the review reviewers of a paper uh, who commented this way. So I just uh, uh, referred to his uh, uh, way of uh, describing it. So there's some, some sort of a constant uh, citations uh, over 25 years. And uh, of course this is because it's not settled, but uh, but then uh, there are some reasons for this. And then it, it's certainly unconventional superconductor, non-S wave superconductor with a very strong electron correlations. And it's a multiband system. And then spin orbit coupling is reasonably strong and very important. So these are one and two really uh, satisfy the, uh, the current, you know, modern superconductor, which uh, we are studying in, uh, in physics. And then, uh, but uh, there is a good expectation uh, that uh, we can really solve this uh, problem uh, more than you know in 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 detail uh, among compared with other unconventional superconductors because uh, uh, the Fermi liquid uh, it's a well-defined Fermi liquid state and unlike uh, you know cuprates and uh, iron nicktides where normal state is also very unconventional and very interesting. But uh, this one, strontium ruthenate, has a very typical textbook-like Fermi liquid state uh, above uh, TC. And then uh, the band structure is relatively uh, simple, although it's a multiband, but it's relatively simple and uh, it characterized very well experimentally and theoretically. And uh, it's a simple tetragonal structure without any distortions to low temperatures. And then uh, also the, for the superconductivity, it may support the novel uh, chiral superconducting order, uh, the topological uh, state. And then uh, I might add that uh, it, uh, the chemically stable, large and high quality single crystals are available. And this is actually very important. This availability of single crystal is very important to, for the advancement of this uh, physics. And then uh, in two years ago, a dramatic development occurs that demands a paradigm change to solve the puzzle. So that's why the, the, the second wave is, is just coming in. And uh, there are some review papers on uh, strontium ruthenate, uh, many review papers. Uh, and uh, the superconductivity was first reported in this paper in 94, uh, 27 years ago. And this is uh, in collaboration with uh, George Bednotes group because I was uh, working as an assistant to George Bednotes uh, in Zurich for one year in uh, 88. And uh, so we started this resonate investigation there, but uh, it was uh, six years ago in Hiroshima in Japan, uh, we, we, where uh, we finally uh, found this uh, superconductivity. And then uh, there are various reviews and the red one was uh, something I'm involved, and then uh, then uh, the latest one may be this uh, Tony Leggett and the Indu, uh, which is uh, published in uh, November uh, 2020. Okay, so then uh, okay, so then uh, in the first part, I will be uh, explaining various uh, uh, key features of uh, strontium ruthenate before 2019. And uh, so I said it's unconventional superconductor uh, with a strong correlations. Uh, for the unconventionalness, uh, the, there's an extreme sensitivity of TC extremely uh, is sensitive to the disorder, non-magnetic disorder. And then uh, uh, Andy McKenzie uh, showed this uh, very clearly and, uh, and also quantitatively. And then this is uh, by uh, uh, non-magnetic uh, disorder and uh, the mean free path uh, can be as long as one micrometer. And uh, uh, yeah, and then uh, uh, it has to be uh, below one micron centimeter uh, to become superconducting. So this uh, two micron centimeter is already a very good uh, conduction for a oxide. And, uh, but uh, this is not enough. You need to go below this and then fortunately we can go really below this and 0 0.1 micron centimeter is available under nanohome centimeters. And then uh, we can reach this uh, ideal TC of about 1.5 Kelvin. And this uh, is very quantitatively characterized by uh, Golkov applied to the P-wave superconductivity in this case. All right, so then uh, it's, uh, 
in the vicinity of motor insulator. So if you replace strontium with calcium, then it becomes a uh, motor insulator. Okay, calcium and strontium are isovalent, you know, both two plus. So there's no doping. It's just the calcium is a little too small and introduce uh, distortions to make a uh, splitting of the uh, band. And that's enough to make it a uh, 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 motor insulator. Okay. And then, uh, and at the, the final point, I saw I said that the uh, chemically stable high quality crystals are available, and we are growing this uh, uh, single crystal by floating zone method, and it melts at uh, 2,100 degree, and we can make a monocrystal of uh, more than five centimeter long. So this is enough for uh, neutron diffraction studies and so on. And uh, we recently published this uh, paper uh, to uh, for it's a Kyoto and uh, Max Planck Dresden collaboration uh, about the uh, uh, progress of this, uh, how to improve uh, this uh, single crystal growth uh, further. So there's a continuous effort to make it better. And then I said the electronic states is characterized by multiband uh, uh, state because uh, we have a uh, uh, four electrons, four electrons in T2G orbitals. So this, uh, uh, there are three bands, three levels, and then we have three bands and we have four electrons. So it's sort of self-doped and without any doping, uh, like uh, cuprate, uh, we have, thanks to this multiband uh, nature, it's already a good metal. And then the question is how this, uh, for, where this uh, fourth, fourth electron go in the, in the orbitals? Okay, so then uh, this is the, uh, in fact, uh, it goes uh, uh, one third, one third, one third to the, these three orbitals. And then there's uh, alpha, gamma, and beta. And there are three uh, uh, bands. And then this uh, gamma, gamma band is mainly uh, uh, deriving from DXY, hybridized with uh, oxygen, in plain oxygen. And then uh, this alpha and beta film surface, cylindrical film surface, mainly come from the uh, DYZ and DZX. These are uh, uh, quasi one dimensional uh, uh, orbitals. Okay. And then, uh, so this is the experimental uh, Fermi surface, actually this photograph, uh, uh, which made the cover page of the physics today uh, is uh, from the quantum oscillations. And although the uh, this uh, dispersion is uh, quite uh, exaggerated, and then uh, th this is the, the state of the art latest uh, uh, ALPES results, angular uh, resolved photo emission results. And then there's a calculation and experiment. And then calculation in, uh, uh, considers this uh, electron correlations. And it's a state of the art band structure calculations uh, by Antoine George's group. And then uh, uh, ALPES measurements is uh, from Baumbacher's group. And then you see a very good, uh, you know, uh, matching of the experiment and theory. Uh, although this is a multi-band, uh, highly correlated electron system, you know, so we can start, theorists can start from this uh, to evaluate the uh, superconducting mechanism. And, uh, and then this is the, uh, uh, this shows the uh, uh, orbital uh, occupation. So now there's a very important point. So. For example, this gamma orbital, gamma orbital, this uh, shows that uh, this is supposed it's a DXY. However, if you look at the diagonal direction, the DXY and DYZ, DZX are really 50-50 uh, mixed up. So in the diagonal direction, there's a very strong mixing of uh, these uh, two uh, orbitals. So therefore, uh, the key concept in this talk, okay, so it's very important to make a clear distinction between the bands, alpha, beta, gamma band, right? Specifying this uh, K, K state and the orbital index, whether it's uh, belong to uh, atomic uh, DXY, DYZ, DZX. So these two concepts shouldn't be mixed up. So that's a sort of a beyond the traditional way of thinking. So then uh, there are uh, people who, uh, uh, pointed out this importance. Uh, this is uh, by uh, uh, Damasheri's uh, paper uh, from uh, they studied the Alpes and uh, spin polarized Alpes, and they uh, with this calculation uh, they mentioned that spin orbital in entanglement and breakdown of the singlet and triplets. So it's no longer possible to write uh, uh, 
simplify. It's just been singular to triplet because uh, there's a mixing of orbitals and and even with the same band, uh, the spins are pointing in different dire directions. Okay, so then uh, uh, before this uh, 2019, we have we are enjoying the nice paradigm, uh, spin triplet chiral P wave, and based on uh, this uh, uh, NMR and night shift, and uh, it's a very nice experiment, and also broken time reversal symmetry evidence by uh, mu SR and Kerr effect. So these uh, combined, uh, we the most uh, plausible. Uh, uh, state was a spin triplet state uh, expressed by this D vector uh, Z. This is uh, spin me meaning spin, uh, Cooper pair spins are in the plane, AB plane. And then KX plus IKY, meaning the Cooper pair has the orbital angular momentum of uh, LZ equals one. And then, th so it's a chiral because a plus one state and minus one state are distinct. So it's a, like a, Cooper pair orbital ferromagnet. And uh, it chooses uh, spontaneously, you know, it may form a chiral domains. And so this is topological because the, uh, this uh, wave function uh, phase uh, phi, wave function phase phi is the same as the K vector direction theta. Uh, this means if you go around, then uh, you have, uh, you have uh, uh, this uh, topological uh, state, <clears throat> two pi. Okay, then uh, this is uh, from uh, uh, Mackenzie's paper, uh, uh, the, the review paper in 2017, even other, right? And then uh, there are a list of various key experiments. But uh, unfortunately, uh, this uh, night shift and uh, neutron uh, scattering results uh, uh, need to be reconsidered. And this is a very uh, unusual because this, uh, you know, as you know, these people are doing very, very careful measurements. And then traditionally, these are very reliable uh, method. But uh, for this uh, superconductor, a special care uh, was needed, in fact. So, uh, so then uh, this is the first part. So I go into the second part. And so what happened to this uh, uh, the previous uh, paradigm? So I'll, I'll, this is the main part and I'll, I'll show you the development since 19, 2019. And so we are into the second quarter of a century. And there are, uh, so this is a sort of summary. So first I'll talk about this uh, Cooper pair spin state. What is the current status of our understanding? And then uh, there is a two component order parameter issue. And then uh, uniaxial strain uh, gives a very nice uh, tool to control the uh, superconductivity. So the TC increases from 1.5 to 3.5, and then uh, this uh, strain induces a lift transition. The Fermi surface changes, okay? So we can control it in situ. And then uh, time reversal symmetry breaking results, uh, by especially by mu SR under strain, it gives a very, uh, it's a very powerful technique and it's giving a very interesting results. So I'll, I'll in the next uh, uh, 30 minutes or uh, so, and I'll be um, discussing, discussing this. So uh, what is a dramatic turning point in 2019? Uh, the uh, uh, Stuart Brown's uh, group uh, uh, was studying the uh, superconductivity of strontium ruthenate under strain. So the TC become higher so they it can allow the, you know, uh, it's a more, uh, you know, uh, you, you can heat it a little more because TC is higher. Then what they found was the uh, night shift, the NMR night shift, which flows the spin susceptibility of the Cooper pair. The experimental result depends on the uh, heating condition, the pulse condition, right? So then initially they, they really nicely reproduce uh, uh, previous results. The night shift doesn't change. However, because since they study this uh, uh, uniaxial strain TC enhanced state, then uh, they, uh, they realized the need for reduce the heat, pulse heat. So here's the results. So for uh, 7.5 microjoule at 1.8, this is a normal state, and 7.5 microjoule at low temperature. So the night shift here, well, this here is a little change, but not so much change. 
at the same temperature, if you, they reduce the, uh, the power, then it really start to change. So the, uh, this peak shift, night shift, indicates that the spin susceptibility is really changing in the superconducting state. So uh, Strat is really nice. And uh, before publication, before submission of the paper, uh, he, uh, he discussed with us uh, at the APS meeting and told us, uh, you know, they are getting these results and you should, you should try it. And very nice. We really appreciate his uh, uh, way of uh, doing science. And so uh, Kenji Ishida quickly uh, reproduced uh, the results. And uh, so the, this is the previous results with, uh, with a reasonable heating. Okay, so the night shift didn't change as a function of temperature. So this is, uh, uh, it's not a singular behavior, but by reducing the power, very unusually reducing the power. Okay, then uh, uh, this, uh, the decrease in the night shift was observed very nicely reproduced. And then uh, UCLA group further uh, went to, uh, to study uh, the magnetic field direction in different uh, direction in the, in, the, in the plane. And then they uh, conclude that the helical P wave is not, not so easy and uh, pneumatic state is uh, not, uh, not uh, plausible. <clears throat> okay, so then uh, the, what about the neutron, polarized neutron results? So the previously, the, uh, you can do this uh, neutron uh, experiment. It's called the Schall-Wedgwood experiment. Uh, Wedgwood is, uh, is uh, from this family of uh, uh, Wedgwood um, family. And uh, anyway, this uh, Steve Hay Hayden's group at, uh, uh, in the UK, Bristol, uh, they did a very nice experiment uh, with, uh, on this. Uh, so these uh, show the previous results. The blue ones are previous results. And it was difficult, but uh, they uh, concluded it's consistent with an in invariant uh, night shift. And the, the neutron results experiment is importantly different from NMR. They, uh, they detect probe uh, magnetization in oxygen and ruthenium sites. And so it's, a, it's not a spin part orbital part. It's a total magnetization they probe. So it's a very uh, uh, important uh, uh, alternative probe for this uh, susceptibility in the superconducting state. Okay, the new results. Uh, so they uh, went to lower magnetic field and then they started to see substantial decrease. Okay, so now they, they agree with the uh, uh, night shift, new night shift experiment. So this is published in 2020. Now, then uh, I'll talk Yoshi, about the second for, part. Yes. Sorry for interrupting. There's one question in the chat. Uh, yes. Which oh, is, okay. okay. Uh, chat, which I is about the, the high field and low field D vector of uh, SRO, and in particular, how this behavior fits in the picture before 2019. Uh -huh. uh, let me see. Uh, let me see. May I see? Somehow, yeah. the, my chat is. Uh, Okay, okay, let me try to get the chat first for the next uh, questions. Sorry, uh, it's okay, I, I haven't read it, but uh, okay, so from, uh, uh, for the previous one, uh, so the question is, what was the previous understanding of the uh, uh, night shift at uh, D vector at low field and high field? Yeah, I think that it's a, right. about the D vector at low fields and high field. Right, so, uh, the rotation of the D vector, let me see, let me recall, uh, was also discussed because the, uh, the uh, night shift along the C axis uh, was supposed to decrease, but it didn't re decrease. So there was a, uh, the discussion of a D vector. Uh, D vector wants to be perpendicular to the magnetic field. So along, in zero field, D vector is Z, but if you apply the field along the C axis, D vector may want to go away from this. And then there was a discussion of how much field is necessary to turn this to, to uh, be consistent with the observed invariance in the night shift. Yes, so there has been a discussion, but no, no clear answer to that. Is that okay? And yeah, all right, thanks a lot. Okay. Okay, so let, let me uh, continue on this one. Okay, so then uh, uh, there's evidence for two component order parameter. 
Okay, so there are two papers uh, in uh, 2020. Uh, so uh, this is the uh, ultrasound evidence for two component superconducting order parameters. And one comes from this uh, uh, Shiro Prost group in Paris, uh, France. And uh, so in the, when you, uh, there are five or six, uh, you know, uh, the uh, elastic constant mode for this uh, uh, D4H uh, uh, strontium ruthenate. <clears throat> and then among them, uh, there are uh, uh, longitudinal mode and transverse mode. And the longitudinal ultrasound should show some jump. It's like a specific key jump at TC. Yeah, that's the usual. And it's uh, the jump should, should be observable. But the transverse, the shear mode should not jump. However, for strong gym ruthenate, it jumps. Okay, so this is C66 is a shear mode, not the not longitudinal, it's a transverse, but it shows a clear jump here at TC. And this is beautiful results uh, coming from uh, 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 Louis Taffer's group uh, by uh, Lupien. Uh, and then uh, this uh, C66 uh, shear mode has a B2G uh, symmetry, epsilon XY. Okay, so that jumps. And that gives you a various important uh, 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 implications. And then, uh, then uh, especially uh, it implies uh, there's a two component order parameter is needed. Uh, I will uh, explain this uh, uh, next. And so this paper, particular paper prefers the nematic state, uh, DXZ state, time reversal symmetry, not broken. Okay, that's also allowed. And then uh, uh, two component means uh, EG, for example, but uh, it doesn't have to be a chiral combination. So it's uh, just uh, one of the, the other uh, EG component is uh, KX, KZ, but uh, it can be uh, just a sing single uh, component here. It doesn't have to be K, uh, KX plus IKY, okay? So this is allowed. And then, uh, uh, so that's, that's the interpretation of this paper. And then the, the other paper uh, uh, from uh, uh, Cornell group is also a very nice uh, technique, uh, just slightly different way of measuring uh, ultrasound. And uh, this uh, paper uh, uh, suggests uh, that uh, a chiral EG, uh, which is uh, uh, this, the same thing, EG, or uh, the B1G uh, cross A2G state, D plus IG state, or uh, uh, D plus IS state is also allowed. So there are uh, three uh, EG and this uh, three sets of uh, available uh, possibility for this. Uh, so I just briefly uh, uh, summarize what, how they come to this conclusion. Okay, so th those are the, this is a paper from uh, 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 this uh, uh, Cornell group. And uh, so, so strong gym ruthenate, there are these five modes, uh, longitudinal modes and uh, 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 transverse mode. And uh, this, uh, we have a jump in uh, C66 with a B2G symmetry. Okay, this is the observation. Okay. And then, uh, then uh, so RMFS relations for ultrasound. So Manfred uh, uh, has a theory uh, on, on, on this uh, ultrasound uh, uh, absorption, how it changes at TC. And then the uh, free energy uh, is uh, this term, uh, B, B1G, uh, uh, B2G. B2G is a uh, eta X, eta Y. And then these two component order parameter produces discontinuity in the associate shear elastic moduli uh, for C66 and in, in this one. So meaning, uh, so if uh, the superconducting order parameter has uh, this uh, eta X, eta Y uh, ingredients, then it, it has a contribution to uh, free energy and it changes uh, in the superconducting state. And this means uh, the, super, uh, the ultrasound velocity changes. All right, so this uh, supercomponent, as I said, uh, it doesn't have to be one plus minus I or one plus minus one, but one zero is also allowed in the symmetry. So that's what, what uh, uh, the, uh, the yeah, ultrasound, one of the ultrasound group I proposed. So then, uh, so then uh, there are actually uh, six possibilities. So C66 B2G, to, to get B2G, the, the red one, you can have uh, 
A1G and B2G uh, combination order parameter or A2G, B1G combination order parameter or just the EG. But uh, if you have just EG, then uh, in addition to B2G, there's a B1G uh, ultrasound, uh, C11 minus C1, C12 uh, should also exhibit the jump. And experimentally, this has been, experimental data is available, but the temperature dependence is so large that it's very difficult to uh, uh, conclude whether there is a jump or not. Okay. So then, uh, so the possibilities are uh, A1G, B2G combination, or A2G, B1G, or EG. So the, there are three sets of uh, possibilities, and that's uh, what uh, I, I explained, right? Now, let me go to the next part. And uh, there's a uh, enhanced superconductivity observed in uh, by a uniaxial strain. So this is, uh, uh, this is uh, this this uh, results also much to uh, the effort and the invention of this uh, piezo uh, actuator uh, by uh, Clifford Hicks, and uh, he uh, developed this uh, 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 uniaxial strain uh, uh, cell, and uh, so uh, then uh, under uniaxial strain uh, TC from 1.5 Kelvin, the ideal TC of undistorted strontium ruthenate uh, goes up to 3.5. And then crossing actually the Van Hoff singularity of the gamma Fermi surface, and there's a Lifshitz transition, Fermi surface topo topology changes, and TC goes down. Goes down. But it, it doesn't disappear immediately. Uh, you know, It just goes down, and it's interesting how it goes. <clears throat> Maybe I, I can show you the, the data before, data later. Okay, so uh, since uh, this uh, very nice uh, jig is uh, invented by uh, Clifford Higgs, so we, we call it uh, Higgs mechanism, right? Higgs mechanism, not Higgs mechanism, uh, Clifford Higgs. <clears throat> okay, then uh, actually this enhanced TC was observed a uh, long time ago by my group, uh, uh, more than 20 uh, uh, years ago, uh, in a uh, strontium lucinate with uh, lucinium metal inclusions. We call it the three Kelvin phase. And uh, so with, with, we can intentionally uh, uh, put uh, lucinium metal by, uh, you know, by having a more lucinium in the liquid and then we, we grow single crystal. We have a nice pattern. This uh, eutectic crystallization is well known. And in that case, uh, somehow TC of strontium lucinate it's clearly uh, in plane two dimensional, quasi two dimensional superconductivity, but TC goes up to 2.5 in this case. And then, uh, then this is a strontium ruthenate, uh, it, superconductivity is occurring in the super, uh, 214, but near the interface of ruthenium. The volume fraction is not so great, but still, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, shielding before, before 1.5 is reached. And then uh, HC2, uh, we measured uh, for this uh, lucinium inclusion without any uniaxial pressure, but the, in, in, uh, the inside, inside where there's a strain. And then uh, here, uh, this is a new results uh, uh, using this uh, uniaxial uh, uh, cell. And it's, it's, uh, it's the same, right? So you have an AB plane, it's uh, enhanced from 1.5 Tesla to uh, 4, 4 Tesla. And then uh, C axis has a, a slightly upturn here. And then we, we reported this slight upturn. So it's really the same phenomena is occurring. Uh, ex uh, yeah, except uh, for the three Kelvin phase, we somehow uh, observe a very uh, huge hysteresis uh, of, uh, uh, with uh, increasing uh, between the increasing H, H and the decreasing H. Okay, so then uh, this uh, uh, enhancement in TC and uh, finding the maximum turned out to be related to the uh, uh, Lipschitz transition. So this is uh, uh, another nice work uh, uh, by McKenzie's group and uh, uh, Sunko, and uh, they did this uh, 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 Alpes measurements with uh, this uh, uniaxial uh, pressure uh, uh, jig they, uh, they made. So the, the crystal is uh, mounted on, 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 on top of this. And then they do this uh, Alpes. Uh, uh. Then uh, without uh, distortion, 
you see a nice gamma fermion surface. But please look at this endpoint. So this gamma fermion surface is inside this Brillouin zone. And here under strain, uh, now the this uh, gamma fermion surface, uh, this the bound singularity point is exceeded. So there's a change from a two-dimensional fermion surface to say quasi one-dimensional gamma fermion surface. And then uh, this is the uh, uh, study by uh, uh, Mackenzie uh, Clifford, a fix uh, group, group. And then uh, this is the uh, bound structure calculation, uh, uh, a rather simple bound structure calculation. Uh, then you, you expect uh, de uh, density of state for only for the gamma fermion surface goes up. But actually it seems uh, alpha and beta is also uh, in the entire uh, fermion surface seem to be uh, uh, affected uh, by the uh, this uh, Van Hoff singularity crossing. Although, you know, Van Hoff singularity crossing is occurring only in uh, two points, you know, two points in the, uh, real, the total Viridian zone, but the experimentally seems uh, all the fermion surfaces are affected by this. Anyway, uh, so they uh, observed this uh, uh, resistivity, the, the crossing of uh, occurring about 0.5% uh, shrinkage. But you see, there's some, some strange things happening here. Okay, below eight Kelvin and beyond this uh, uh, lift shift transition. Uh, there's some change in the uh, resistivity, uh, T square or T to the alpha uh, resistivity coefficient. There's uh, some change. Okay, now the, then uh, recently, uh, uh, the it's, uh, uh, Hans Henning uh, uh, Klaus group and the Green Enco and and uh, Gosh and other people uh, did this uh, measurements uh, using this uh, Clifford's uh, uh, strain jig, the gi gigantic uh, strain cell designed for mu SR experiment. And then this is the uh, AC susceptibility and the under strain, this uh, TC goes from 1.5 Kelvin, this plug one to uh, 1.8 to uh, beyond the two, two Kelvin. And under this uh, strain, the uh, mu SR uh, probes uh, the uh, uh, internal, spontaneous internal magnetic field, uh, which signifies the time reversal symmetry breaking. And this signal onset does not change. So then uh, you have this uh, phase diagram. So if you compress along the 100 direction, uh, TC increases to 3.5 and decreases. And then the time reversal symmetry breaking, mu SR signal, uh, start appears only uh, be below this temperature, which is similar to the original temperature. And this part, this part of the phase diagram is uh, expected, anticipated if you have a chiral state, uh, Px plus Iky or Dxy plus uh, Dyz plus uh, Dxz. So chiral D or chiral P, you anticipate this kind of a phase diagram. So it's sort of confirming. And then this peak corresponds to this uh, Van Hoff singularity point crossing. And then there's a uh, SDW, uh, the real magnetic order uh, occurring at uh, below this, uh, beyond this 0.8% uh, uh, shrinkage. And this was uh, previously detected by the uh, resistivity measurements by Andy McKenzie's group. Okay, then there's an important, so what's important here is that uh, if you uh, increase TC by uniaxial strain, then uh, this uh, two transition splits. And now this is the latest by uh, Greenenko and uh, uh, Kasanov group and uh, USR experiment. And uh, it's been just accepted by Nature Communication. And so they studied, we studied the hydrostatic pressure and lanthanum substitution, and different ways of uh, uh, modifying the uh, superconductivity of strontium ruthenate. And in this case, uh, for hydrostatic pressure, in, instead of increasing TC, we can, TC decreases. But the onset of time reversal symmetry breaking and onset of superconductivity matches. So it's, it's different, it doesn't split. And also for the lanthanum uh, uh, substitution case, TC decreases because of this non-magnetic disorder. And again, TC decreases and onset of mu SR signal 
also decreases uh, concurrently, right? So, so this uh, is uh, if the uh, degeneracy in the ideal, you know, 1.5 pristine uh, phase is uh, accidental, then uh, these two temperatures should uh, separate in general. But the experiment shows uh, as long as you keep tetragonal symmetry, then they go together. So this is a this is a good evidence supporting the uh, single representation, e.g., instead of a uh, you know B1G plus cross uh, A1G cross B2G and so on. Okay, so then, but there's a controversy of uh, this state statement. So this is the results. But uh, again, the McKenzie's group uh, did a careful uh, uh, measurements of a uh, uh, specific heat under strain. But then here, okay, so this is uh, TC 1.5 without any strain. This is the red one. But then uh, under uniaxial strain, uh, the TC goes up. So the, this purple one, the highest TC is at, uh, uh, at uh, 0.5% uh, shrinkage compression. And then uh, they have a data uh, for higher one with the TC going down again. Uh, however, here, okay, so if you look at the purple one uh, with a 0.5%, 0.5% purple one, okay, TC goes up. And then there should be another second transition here at 1.5. If you look at the, the purple one at 1.5 Kelvin, there's no evidence of this uh, th uh, second uh, uh, transition. So there, are, of course, there has been a lot of uh, discussion uh, based on uh, Ginsburg Landau uh, free energy and so on. But uh, this is not understood as far as I, uh, in my understanding, uh, this is uh, remains a puzzle. So, uh, so that's a remaining uh, controversy. So, so it's urgently important to confirm the second transition by other probes such as Kerr effect. Easy to say, but it's not so easy to actually do the perform the experiment under a strain. Now, uh, this uh, before leaving this subject, uh, I should mention I, I told you about the uh, uh, lucinium inclusion uh, three Kelvin phase. The TC enhancement is possible by without any external unaxial pressure by just putting uh, lucinium inclusions, and in this case. Uh, there is a, a second transition already observed. Okay, so uh, this this is the uh, uh, the black one is the HC two, and this uh, uh, red one is the uh, the another uh, transition observed by the uh, the kink in the conductance. Okay, so the conductance shows a kink. Conductance goes up below this uh, H star, and this uh, conductance increase is associated with this uh, zero bias conductance peak, which is supposed to appear when you have uh, two components. So this may be related to this uh, second uh, transition. Okay, but uh, the, there's controversy. Uh, uh, there are some controversies. And so I'm going to list uh, three more experiment before going into the final part. And the first one is uh, this uh, Kashiwaya's measurements at uh, the corner junction, uh, strontium lucinate niobium uh, Josephson junction. And what they did is uh, this uh, uh, time reversal invariant superconductivity. So the the mu SR just uh, uh, you know shows uh, time reversal symmetry breaking, and the uh, ultrasound also is consistent with the uh, time reversal symmetry breaking state, chiral state. Uh, but uh, this uh, junction experiment uh, indicates this. Uh, so this technique is uh, this. Uh, you change the uh, current direction and magnetic field direction. So current is changed and magnetic field direct direction. So I don't go into the details, but the, this this way uh, you can prove whether the time reversal symmetry is broken or not. And this uh, it it has a very complicated shape, but if you uh, this. Uh, reverse invert H and uh, I, then it really matches perfectly. So this, uh, from this uh, Kashiwaya concluded, the time reversal symmetry is not broken in this, at least on the surface in this uh, junction state. Now the, if it's chiral, then uh, uh, 
it you are suppose uh, it should be possible to observe a spontaneous magnetic field around the uh, impurities or around the chiral uh, domain boundary. So uh, Clifford, uh, uh, when he was a uh, uh, student at Stanford, uh, he studied, uh, investigated this in detail uh, using the scanning uh, squid probe. And uh, his conclusion is uh, here, this is the sort of anticipate expected signal from the uh, chiral domains, which produces a uh, magnetic field. And this is the data. So he sets uh, the, uh, the uh, upper limit of the size of the uh, chiral domains, if possible, if it exists. So, so from this uh, uh, scanning uh, probe, uh, magnetic field probe measurements, the, so far, the results is negative. However, uh, maybe it's not, this chiral uh, superconductivity may not be uh, pro probed by this technique. And the, uh, this is the latest uh, uh, paper, uh, Iguchi and Moraes group uh, kept, uh, in uh, two February uh, this year. And Iguchi uh, presented this talk, talk in work in uh, APS meeting uh, two years ago. And uh, uranium ruthenium to silicon two is, is believed to be a typical uh, chiral uh, D-wave superconductor with KX plus IKY uh, order parameter and uh, with, uh, uh, <clears throat> with the uh, chiral domains. And so he, they investigated this and then as a conclusion, there's no evidence of chiral magnetization in either AC susceptibility or DC magnetization yeah, using this. Okay, so uh, another uh, chiral D-wave chiral superconductor candidate uh, doesn't show this uh, uh, chiral magnetic field. Okay, then uh, I, uh, for this is, I, I heard uh, this group, uh, it has a st strong interest in STM. So uh, I should uh, add, uh, in addition to a junction experiment, there's a beautiful STM experiment uh, by uh, uh, Seamus Davis group. And then also this uh, uh, video, uh, Matt Havan is uh, deeply involved. And we have been collaborating with uh, Seamus and the video's group for a long time. And so this is uh, their publication in uh, 2020. So this is shows the uh, strontium oxygen surface, nice, nice surface with some uh, strontium uh, deficiency in, in this uh, cleaved surface. And then this is a, a superconducting gap and uh, showing like a D wave type, uh, you know, line nodal type uh, gap uh, structure. And then, uh, so, this is the uh, experiment, quasi-particle interference uh, experiment. And then, uh, uh, so these uh, the strong spots uh, corresponds to uh, this uh, Q vector here uh, from, the, uh, from the gap to uh, nodal, nodal uh, quasi-particles. Uh, there are five uh, particles, uh, nodal particles expected if you have uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, gap symmetry. And then uh, these are all these five are detected. And this is the uh, theory calculated based on this uh, uh, model. And so they assume this uh, superconducting gap on the alpha and beta bands because the gamma, gamma is uh, as a in plane quasi 2D. And in, in this uh, strontium, uh, strontium or layer tunneling, they wanted some Z component. So they uh, uh, believe that they only observed uh, alpha and beta but not uh, gamma. Okay, so as long as uh, alpha and beta uh, uh, firm, uh, firm surface is concerned, uh, if you have this, this kind of uh, gap structure with a large gap along the, uh, this one whole singularity uh, direction, and then uh, a small gap in the diagonal direction, then you expect this uh, Q1 to Q5, and that's what's being observed. And uh, so, in this paper, uh, this uh, they they said that this STM results most consist is most consistent with uh, the x square minus y square. This is like a, you know cuprate uh, YBCO type uh, symmetry, but I think uh, other interpretation is possible. I mean, they, they just uh, in, uh, assume this, and then they 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 see this uh, quasi particle interference consistent with this this kind of a gap structure. So, uh, so the summary, to summarize this part, 
uh, the Coupa pair spin state, uh, I, I told you the new development is the NMR and polarized neutron and two component order parameters uh, from ultrasound jump in the uh, uh, transverse mode, a very unusual uh, transverse uh, jump. And then uh, there are four interpretations, uh, EG or time reverse symmetry, Cairo, D plus ID, and then uh, this uh, combined uh, uh, symmetry, D plus IG, D plus, uh, yes, which are all consistent with this observation. And the unique strain uh, shows uh, TC doubles under 100 strain, and the strain induces the lift shift transition. So it's a very nice way of uh, controlling the uh, film surface and superconductivity. And then time reverse symmetry breaking results. So there's a very interesting mu SR results. And splitting under, if you break the tetragonal symmetry, it splits, D22 temperature splits. But if you don't, then uh, under hydrostatic pressure or just impurities, then there's no splitting, although TC changes a lot. So this uh, results in, in favor of uh, the single uh, representation, chiral time reverse symmetry breaking EEG state, D plus ID. Okay, so that's the second part. So I, I'll finish with this third part, is it how, how we can uh, go forward. Uh, okay, so then I told you about some controversial results which exists also. Now, then uh, initially this, uh, even, even you accept spin singlets. Okay, suppose you accept spin singlet. Okay, so the, and a number of experiments uh, point towards uh, chiral D wave. Uh, so KZ, KX plus IKY. So what's wrong with this? Uh, let's settle with this. Okay, but we cannot do it because uh, this uh, state with uh, KZ, order parameter has a KZ. So this means uh, uh, if KZ equals zero, for the electron involving in a Cooper pair, then there's no gap, right? So this means uh, 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 that electrons with uh, phantom velocity zero cannot pair. So for quasi two dimensional system like strontium ruthenate, it is unlikely that the uh, electrons moving in the plane cannot pair. Okay, that's quite unusual. So that's why people couldn't accept this uh, uh, state. And uh, so so this is the Fermi surface. It's exaggerated, experimental Fermi surface, but exaggerated by uh, uh, 1,000 times. Okay. So Kz equals zero means uh, also the Fermi velocity is zero, right? So there's a, the different Kz with a different Fermi velocity, which is uh, perpendicular to the Fermi surface. But anyway, Kz equals zero uh, pair, which doesn't exist. Uh, meaning uh, uh, film velocity is zero. Okay, so this is quite un unacceptable. However, uh, this situation may occur uh, between the electron in different orbitals. Okay, if you require one orbitals in uh, dxy, the another one dyz, then it may happen that uh, they have to be away from the uh, kz equals zero. So then uh, one such uh, example is uh, the one I'm, I'm explaining in the next uh, a few, few, few view graphs. So beyond the tra tra traditional unconventional pairing. So this was uh, uh, suggested by Ramirez and Sigris, and then uh, uh, also uh, refined by recently uh, by Su, including the actual, uh, you know, more realistic Fermi surface and detailed uh, uh, energy calculations. And the, okay, so the order parameter, so this, so now it starts from the experimentalist uh, interpretation. So please correct me if I say something wrong. So there is something in the chat. There is a regarding very high magnetic yeah. field. Is, uh, yeah, there's one question in the chat. Uh, let me see, let me read it at this point. Has there been any, been any experiments results regarding very high magnetic field phase diagram? A significance of uh, re-entrance would be indicated. Ah, oh, Cairo is in order parameter. Yeah, so uh, we, okay, so we have, the experiment exists at the very high field, especially field uh, exactly in the plane and so, uh, but that there is no evidence for re-entrance uh, of uh, superconductivity. And uh, so, uh, there are maybe other uh, discussions that I can make, but let me let me briefly. Uh, sorry, in this. All right. So, uh, okay. So this uh, 
now first, uh, what is the traditional uh, pairing uh, concept? So conventional and unconventional. So when we say conventional, so this, uh, this uh, order parameter or the state vector uh, has a, a parity part and then spin part. So orbital parity is a even parity and S wave and spin singlet that we call it uh, conventional superconductivity. And unconventional superconductivity is non S wave. So it can occur for YBCO or iron, uh, no, no, uh, heavy fermion systems, uh, D wave. Uh, with uh, even parity and spin singlet, but still a higher uh, order uh, uh, orbital magnetic moment of the Cooper pair. So it's L equals non-zero. And then uh, another uh, uh, important unconventional state is uh, spin triplet and odd parity and P wave and UPT3 is supposed to be F wave and uh, uranium uh, terulium two. Uh, there's an interesting uh, discussion about I think P wave. Uh, spin triplet. <clears throat> oh, those are the traditional uh, uh, framework. Now with this, uh, you, you may want to, for the multiband system, you want to add this uh, orbital, uh, inter-orbital uh, degree of freedom. So multi-orbital superconductors is a typical, uh, strontium ruthenate is a typical one. So then uh, this, is, so I, I call it, uh, let me call it beyond unconventional, okay? So beyond traditional unconventional, okay? Then uh, you can have, uh, for, for example, orbital, interorbital, triplet, or singlet. And so let, let's talk about interorbital singlet. You have a, a D wave, uh, you have a, a, or the D, uh, and then parity is even and spin triplet. So spin triplet, uh, even parity, uh, interorbital singlet state. And so this is uh, seem to be one promising state that I'm going to talk about as an example. Okay. So 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 then uh, I hope that the strontium resonate be become a, a, a good example of this a new type of uh, superconductor. And uh, there are other exotic pairing states like FFLO or the off frequency pairing and so on that uh, I just concentrate on on this orbital state. And then uh, uh, sorry, the time is uh, running up. Yeah. So um, this uh, paper. Uh, Yoshi, sorry for yes. interrupting. There's another uh, yes. question in the. In uh, the another chat. question. Okay. Yeah. Which uh, is, what, what is are... the main main challenge in resolution spin and orbital angular momentum texture over the brilliant zone for superconducting? And what challenges are there in measuring uh, spin current? Uh -huh. So right. So. Mm, mm, Orbital texture of the real and so on. Uh, mm, the uh, spin texture was, uh, for example, I think probed by Alpes measurements so far, but uh, you, you need to go below 1.5. And also uh, Alpes is sort of surface sensitive. And we know that the surface has a distortion, atomic distortion. For well, strontium resonate, uh, really to get the uh, bulk uh, uh, fermi surface state below 1.5 Kelvin uh, is, is a challenge. And, but uh, there is a, a, a yeah, it's, uh, effort of, uh, of course, this um, texture, momentum, uh, spin texture in the spin polarized alpes. And then uh, challenge uh, spin, spin current, right. Uh, how to measure spin current? Yeah, uh, we we tried. Many people tried and uh, thought about it. And uh, for example, making a micro uh, ring of a superconductor, and uh, so it has been uh, successful. Okay, sorry. Yeah, uh, but it's a, it's a good uh, uh, direction to pr uh, prove something. Okay, yes. Okay, let, let me go back to this. Uh, uh, Ramirez and, and Sue and, and Achterberg. Uh, um, just just okay, one thing. I think that we are going a little bit over time. So would it be okay, okay if we wrap up in five minutes? Or... Five minutes. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. so I have right. actually uh, maybe three more. Or so yeah. okay. So then uh, uh, okay. So this state. So the order parameter is expressed by this uh, uh, parity part, and then uh, orbital uh, singlet interorbital part, and then spin part. Okay, then uh, the promising EG state is uh, this uh, six three and five three, and let's talk about uh, this uh, uh, five three state, for example, as an example. And this gives uh, the 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 expressive form of the wave function is k 
KZKX, KZKY. So you can have a chiral D wave. And then yet it's a spin triplet. And uh, so this is my, my cartoon. So my colleague uh, theorist said that it's okay to write this, this in this way. So it's maybe much easier for experimentalists. So let's look at this uh, four cases. Okay, so it's a spin, it's a K minus K pair. And uh, on the gamma film surface, you have a spin up and down, spin up and spin down. But then uh, the orbital is a uh, two here. Two, two means uh, D, Y, Z. And the orbital here is uh, three, D, X, Y. So orbital, interorbital pair. Okay, so that allows, uh, you know, KZ non-zero. And then uh, you have another uh, up-down state, but then three, two. So if you look at this, uh, you have, uh, uh, let's see, uh, A, B, and C, D. Okay, A, B is uh, uh, two, three, minus three, two. And here, two, three, minus three, two. And then this one is spin up down, and this one is spin down up. So it's a, if you look at the spin only, it's a up down plus down up. So it's a, a z d vector z uh, spin triplet s equals one s z equals zero state. If you uh, look at the uh, spin only, but now if you look at the orbital only, and the same a b c d your line a c b d, then you see here uh, two three minus three two. Two, three, minus three, two. So that the uh, orbitals, uh, interorbital singlet. Okay, so this is the state. Then in this case, uh, EG and A1G are possible uh, based on the realistic uh, film surface. And then uh, for EG, uh, uh, they propose this uh, uh, gap structure where the uh, nodal structure in the horizontal as well as the zone boundary. And then there's a diagonal also uh, uh, nearly gap uh, structure. And the gamma film surface uh, is a sort of dominant. <clears throat> and then, so my question, why does this superconducting gap takes minimum in the diagonal direction? Although it is the diagonal direction in which the orbital mixing is, is supposed to be strongest, right? But uh, this uh, Bahnhof singularity direction has a gap maximum. Right, so, ah, okay, so this is the conclusion, okay. So, uh, so there has been no convincing scenario among the traditional spin singlet pairing. So we need to introduce something new. And then uh, confirming the second transition is important. And then the framework beyond this traditional, tra traditional super, uh, unconventional superconductivity may be needed. An interorbital pairing model, I think is very promising. And then, so if you go from conventional superconductivity to unconventional superconductivity, now strontium to ruthenium O4 may serve as a good example to establish to beyond traditional unconventional superconductivity. So since the exotic superconductivity word is already used, maybe you can call it hyper superconductivity. Okay. Kitos, thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot, Joshi, for this wonderful talk and for telling us about this uh, really interesting unconventional superconductor, or as you say, hyper unconventional superconductor. So now we have some time for questions. So if you have questions, you can either uh, raise your hand or write your question in the chat. Uh, and uh, yeah, in the, in the meantime, I can perhaps start asking the, the first question if there are none from the, uh, from the audience. So, um, so what what would be the kind of experiment that we would need to to do to probe this um, orbital triplet superconductivity in SRO? So, would we try some transport experiment, or is there something that you have been thinking in that direction? Uh... Mm, so we we are still uh, in the. Maybe I, I stop the. Uh, should I stop the uh, uh, sharing first? Uh, uh, we it, we no longer see your screen now. So. Oh okay yeah, you see yeah. It. okay right. <laughs> uh, mm, no really a good idea of uh, really uh, establishing this uh, orbital singlet scenario, but uh, we can test uh, various uh, theoretical predictions. Uh, so whether this uh, matches uh, experiment matches with uh, theoretical predictions, 
And uh, so there has been uh, various uh, you know, promising efforts, but uh, since it's recorded, I cannot tell so much about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, so that's the that, disadvantage of a recorded uh, seminar. Yeah, we will also have you. we will also have an unrecorded part of the colloquium. So, <laughs> yeah, if anybody wants, we can, yeah they, they could chat about it. Now uh, there's another question by Aline. Aline, please go ahead. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, Yuchi. Uh, thank you for the very nice uh, review and very nice comprehensive uh, talk. Um, I need to say I really like your take on beyond unconventional superconductivity. I think that's a very inspiring way to look at it. Um, my question concerns something that you mentioned towards the beginning of the second part, which um, is related to the observation of the second transition. And maybe I'm not so aware of it. Can you comment on it again? Uh, what's the uh, uh, conditions under which uh, you see some signature of the second transition uh, by the kink in the conductance. Uh, uh, I see. Yes. So Thanks. yes. So the zero bias conductance peak in the uh, uh, SIN junction, quasi particle tunneling. It's not a Josephson tunneling. Quasi particle tunneling. The zero bias conduct, it's uh, actually made by a strontium ruthenate and uh, uh, the, uh, it's a uh, ruthenium metal in this case. Yeah, normal metal. And uh, then, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, it, it, it is, it is. Uh, strontium ruthenate superconductor and uh, ruthenium metal, normal, and quasi particle tunneling. And if you have uh, uh, two components, and then uh, you are supposed to have uh, uh, the uh, zero bias conductance peak. And from the onset of the zero bias conductance peak, which is different from the onset of uh, superconductivity, you can prove the onset of time reverse symmetry working, different from TC. I see, but these samples and, are not strained, or are these? Um... No. The so far the, the the one in done in experiment is a ruthenium included sample, oh, okay. so we have a nice uh, ruthenium metal normal metal to uh, strontium ruthenate uh, superconductor junctions naturally made uh, atomically clean junctions. Okay, thank you for. And then there's a very uh, recent paper uh, for interpretation of this uh, by uh, Kaneyasu and Sigrist, Physical Review B. I uh, mentioned this. Uh, uh, 2019, Kaneyasu and uh, Sigrist, PRB, 2019, which discusses this. Okay, thank you. All right, and so then, uh, I don't... Did I uh, uh, answer the, the last part of uh, uh, Ashley's uh, questions? Uh, I think there's an Alpes now with a soft X-ray that yeah. can resolve bug more than surface as a comment. Ah, okay, thank you very much, yeah, right. So uh, people are really concerned about this, uh, how to uh, get into the bulk, uh, even without, without these surface distortions. And, uh, but uh, going then to lower temperature, is not so easy. You know, you need to go to helium three temperature to get into the superconducting state. All right, great. So, oh, there's one question by Clifford. Clifford, please go ahead. Oh, gosh, so, um, I asked a question about uh, uh, junction. So you should, you should, you told us that um, you know this experiment from Kashiwaya tell that said found that there was no time reversal symmetry breaking um, but there are also a number of uh, junction experiments from you know from your group and recently with uh, Jan Arch that show that uh, there is you know there do seem to be domains um, maybe not time reversal symmetry breaking strictly but that you do have a domain structure um, within strong to so uh, I wonder where you think the uh, the status is like yeah is, is do, do, do the junctions uh, uh, do, do you have time reversal symmetry breaking from the junction experiments is maybe Maybe did Kashi Yatel get unlucky with that particular sample? Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Uh, so today I didn't have time to show this, uh, but uh, it, there's a clear uh, evidence that 1.5 Kelvin pristine phase uh, is uh, somewhat very strange. Uh, but the 
yeah, enhance the phase is more uh, conventional. Okay, now uh, the techniques are somewhat different. Uh, let me see. Uh, sorry, I should be able to answer this, uh, uh, but uh, sorry, I'm maybe a little too tired to answer. Uh, let me see, there's a, um, yeah, right. So the difference between those uh, showing unusual 1.5 Kelvin superconductivity and Kashiwaya's uh, measurement. Uh, let's see, he, he also goes uh, to a very uh, small size and he, and he, he studied, remember, he studied this uh, corner junction squid, and then with the same junction, they are making it smaller and smaller, smaller. And then after they reach this uh, uh, stable state, and then they 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 demonstrated this. Yeah. You know. uh, sorry, I I should be answering better. I'm sorry about this. Yeah. You know. uh, maybe uh, is Kashiwai san here or anybody? Uh, Yeah, by next time I, I'll, I'll prepare better answers. <laughs> Sorry. Well, thank, thank you anyway. All right, so since there are no more questions in the chat, I would suggest that we can close the official part of the colloquium. So first of all, uh, thanks a lot Yoshito, for this wonderful talk today. It was great to hear uh, about this uh, really interesting results in strontium rosinate. Uh, and thank you everybody for coming.